oh my gosh, I'm kind of loving this, this, this angelic glow. I did a lock on my phone and all of a sudden I'm in heaven. I'm going to keep it. We're, we're doing this. Hi everybody, I'm Crystal Ann Compton and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about a few things, but in this video I wanted to chit chat with those spiritual people who really want a deeper spiritual connection, but for whatever reason just don't feel like they can find the time to do all the things necessary in order to spiritually connect. I want to start by saying that it really is important that we achieve a spiritual connection that we're able to hook into what I like to call source energy, which is just another way to say God energy or divine energy. In order for us to truly begin to live the life that we came here to live, hooking in to our spiritual connection allows us to live that life. This is what Christ was talking about when Christ said, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things shall be added unto you. Christ is talking about the spiritual connection and he's saying, Seek that connection first and then all the great things will happen. All the relationships, all the opportunities, health, wellness, abundance, blessing. This all comes part and parcel secondarily to your spiritual connection. So the first thing I want to say is that it is important that we find ways to spiritually connect. This should always be on the mind. We should always be doing something every day in order to achieve this. Having said that, I think some of us as spiritual people kind of need to take ourselves off the hook a little bit. We need to stop pressuring ourselves to be perfectly spiritual. First of all, there's nothing that's per there's no perfect spirituality. It's you in your life trying to figure out how to live that life as spiritually as possible. That's never going to be perfect because life itself is imperfect. So give yourself a little grace here. I also want everybody to understand that life tends to flow in seasons, in seasons. I had a class earlier in the month and part of this month about angels and I gave my Q&A last weekend and it was a live broadcast and we had some people on there and one of the people that was there, one of the students asked a question. She said, how can I spiritually connect? My life is so freaking busy. She had four kids. She was a full-time college student. I think she had a job. She had a busy, busy life, and she was barely eking out a couple of minutes to meditate. And she felt bad about that because she really, really has a desire to enlighten and to begin to experience her life on an entirely different spiritual level. And I, I get that. The first thing I told her I want to share with you was that some of these seasons of our lives are very, very hectic. They're very busy. For example, I remember when my daughter was five, six, seven years old, and she was into everything. She was a tomboy. She loved to be outside, rolling in the mud. She was artistic and creative. She was always talking. She just was this big, beautiful child presence in the world. And as a mom, that kept me pretty busy. I was so grateful that my mother lived with me at the time and she was able to help me with my own daughter. But life was busy. I wasn't able to pursue my passion. I didn't even know what my passion was at the time. I wasn't able to do all the things I know are so enriching to body, mind, and spirit because I was trying to clean up the snot from under her nose or make her some dinner. It was very, very hectic. Looking back on that period of her life and my life now, I have to say, I wish I was more present. I wish I could have been a bit more grateful and just allowed for that pace of life in that season of life. I was always kind of resisting it. I was always frustrated. I was always trying to get there on time. I was resenting that I didn't have enough time to take care of myself. I was just in my head a lot. I wasn't present being with the season of my life. And now my daughter's 20, almost 21. She just got married. She has a life of her own. And I find myself often just missing that five-year-old, oh, <laughs> missing that five-year-old baby, missing that six or seven-year-old baby, missing that me who had an opportunity to love that child at that time or in that season of her life and my life. I wish I had just allowed myself to do what I had to do to take her to soccer practice, take her to school, feed her dinner, sit with her at the table, and not feel so harried, not feel so frustrated because I wasn't doing things for myself, but instead just be in that moment. 
I wish I could have that now. Now, I'm just, I'm waiting for grandbabies. <laughs> I'm waiting for the next generation to come so I can be more present. I think that's why grand, grandparents really, really love their grandchildren because they have an opportunity to focus on the things that they should have been focusing on when they had their little ones. It's just the cycle of life. It's how it works. But I told the student, don't worry about it. You're right where you're supposed to be. Don't put added pressure on yourself to be a certain kind of spiritual person. That doesn't, that doesn't work. And it's just going to make you feel bad about yourself. And that lowers your vibration and makes everything harder. Instead, give yourself some grace. Allow yourself to be in the pace of the season of your life and just embrace it. Try to make that positive association with where you are at this time. Secondarily, I told her that irrespective of the fact that she couldn't really find a lot of time to do her various disciplines and practices, she still could meditate. There are two times of the day when we are given an opportunity, no matter what, irrespective of how busy our lives are, to meditate. That's when we are falling asleep at night, and that's when we are just waking up in the morning. During both of those times, we enter into what's called the hypnagogic state, although it could be the hip hypnopompic state. I always get them wrong. But it's a tranced, like, interbetween state of consciousness where we're not quite asleep, but we're also not quite awake. It's a blending of the two. This is a very highly psychically charged state of being. And if we can play around in that hypnagogic magnetic state, if we can really relax and sink into that state and open ourselves up, staying as aware as possible to spirit and to the messages of spirit or the promptings of spirit, or just to hang out with spirit and be in the energy of spirit, spirit, we can use that state to profoundly spiritually connect. And we all have that time. We all fall asleep at night or at some point during the day. We all wake up from that sleep that we've just had. It's kind of like this built-in mandatory time where we get to do the connection or the connecting that allows us to live a higher spiritual life. So use those states. Be mindful of them. A lot of us work so hard that we're asleep in a minute. We hit our head, hits the pillow. Next thing we know, we're totally asleep. Try not to fall right to sleep. Try to play around in that delicious, drowsy, tranced out state. Try to have communication with God or with spirit. Try to receive, try to pay attention to the images that you're seeing in the clairvoyant mind or perhaps things that you're hearing or things that you're feeling. This again is a very psychic state and spirit will speak to you if spirit knows you're attempting to work or to meditate in that state. And if that's all you can do, that's perfectly fine. If all you can do is get a few minutes in right before bed and a few minutes in when you wake up, that's fine. Don't put any more pressure on yourself than that. Spirit will always honor any thing that you do that moves you in the direction of a deeper relationship with spirit. And if that's what you can do, spirit knows that. Spirit isn't, God isn't upset that you're not making more time for God. God is God no matter what. It's about this life that we're living in this third dimension, doing the very best that we can in the various seasons of our lives and reminding ourselves in each of those seasons to be as present and grateful as possible. Even though we're busy, even though it can be hard, it's still beautiful indeed. Life is beautiful, so give yourself a little compassion. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go to crystallandcompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.